ready. Moving! Mom, make Dad tell the story right. That's what really happened. Oh. The flight meets back on the menu, boy! I am so sorry. I promise we don't all think you're like that. What the f- It would never have worked between us, darling. I'm sorry. These are actors. These are people who could be doing something else. And they're on the big screen uh, actually selling our characters. And we can't make it work because we're in the comic book industry going, well, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. is pretty good as the Iron Man. But I think it'd be much better if we just killed him and just added a little teenage black girl with a bad attitude. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. It's creators that did not capitalize on the greatest advertising push for comics in the history of anything. You had the biggest 20 run of movies ever made. It's unprecedented. And what did you do? When everybody in the world knew who Tony Stark was, who Iron Man was, and they went into a comic store, who was it? It was Riri Williams. When everybody in the world knew who fucking Hawkeye was for the first time in 60 years, it was a household name. Let me go in it. Where's Hawkeye? Uh, that's her over there. It's Kate Bishop. You fucking creators that did not capitalize. Well, I want to, yeah, I want to see Thor. Where's his comics? Oh, no, it's her. It's uh, that woman. <laughs> that woman with, no, you assholes. You artists, you creators at the fucking mainstream. You destroyed these shops. It was you. <laughs> it's like there's nobody else to fucking point the finger at. You were given a legacy by your betters, by the Stanleys and Dickos and, uh, and Kirby's. And your betters gave you a legacy. And the best you could come up with was Riri Williams and Kamala Khan. You fucking destroyed this shit. I just it just occurred to me that when they when they're doing that, they're probably yeah. just singing it without the music, like in in the in the apartment. Oh yeah. So it was would have sounded a whole lot worse. <laughs> That's what will sound like. You ever see um <laughs> yeah, like any behind the scenes of like a, a a club or like when they're filming like a prom, it's just people yeah. dancing to nothing. And then there's yeah. like a you know, there's a mic and a boom like a boom mic around the two people talking and it looks the, like the dumbest thing you've ever seen yeah it's like uh it's like um uh what's that thing when when it's it's looks real but not quite real like it looks human, but not Valley. Quite human yeah that that right it looks like that and it, but the worst thing is when you watch the big bang theory without the laugh track on it oh, and they yeah. all just say their line and then stand around for five seconds <laughs> <laughs> that show was What's going on. Abysmal. What's going on, Camel? Uh, uh I don't know. You just I don't even know anymore. Probably. What? You just woke up, probably. I did. Yeah, I did. I woke. I had to set my alarm. I was like, all right. And then I get here. You know, because like a couple days ago, you were like, oh, we got to do the the draw stream on Tuesday, and I was like, that's fine. And I said, oh, well, what time do you want to do? I was like, well, we should do a CG Jax instead. And and I so I asked. And Rob was like, I said, well, what time do we do the draw stream anyway? And he goes, well, it's the same time for us every fucking... I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Christ. You're getting really butthurt over this, aren't you? I am, because it switched for you guys so many times. And then I got to hear Rob just prattle bullshit out of his mouth he's just like oh it's always it's not the same time it's yeah because 30 it's 1 30 it's three in the morning i'm like i i, I need something <laughs> it's because it's because we switched um daylight savings and then you switched daylight savings and then i don't know other things happen 
And yeah, nah, we've yeah. always just done it our time when I finish various <laughs> dubious <Yeah>. turn. <laughs> Let's say hello to some people in the chat here. We've got Maromi. Look who's here, Camel. Jizzle. Oh, Jizzle. Jizzle, where have you been? I haven't seen Jizzle in you? ages. It's a cr- I don't know if we've that ever seen Jizzle, Jizzle on my channel. There's, there's no way you can deduce anything else from that. <laughs> Atheline's here. Dal's got to watch it on the replay. Well, uh, hope, hope we make it worth your while, Dale. Uh, Noren's here. Who else? Uh, D's here. Hal D. Sark. Jeremy Burtz. I see Nolan Lockhart. Paul, it's arts. Phantasmagorical. A lot of... Uh, oh, that's a nice name. No, I've seen Phantasmagorical, I think. I'm pretty sure on Hal Salad. A lot of uh, Hal Salad watchers coming over to hang out with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Send your taxes this way. It's an 18-month-old cartoon. You mean get lights? (laughs) (laughs) Great. I'm I'm glad glad those guys are back. (laughs) I got to make some new content. It just takes takes a long time. Uh, Nolan says, yeah, it's my boy Camel. What's up, Nolan? Nolan is the other side, the other side of the coin of uh, Nolan and Nate Callis. And uh, exactly. Nate came on. How do you think now that Nate isn't here? How do you think he went on um, on Camel Nights the other night? <laughs> look, look. I think he did the best he could. But you know, here's the thing. If you, I it's that's my fault. I should have I should have brought him on earlier before we started to make sure that his camera and his mic were correct because that clearly is an issue for like first time streamers. It happens to everyone. I didn't realize that Nate was a hundred percent first time streamer. He told me you told both of us after the show. He's like, I've never been on a stream ever in my life, and I'm like, okay, cool. He wasn't nervous. He didn't seem no, nervous. No, he did fine. He did fine on the show, but you know the uh the hijinks <laughs> the antics to get everything uh it was working. perfect actually i loved it i loved that his <laughs> camera didn't work and his mic didn't work and even when he could get it to work he sounded like he was from inside <laughs> cathedral. and i'm just like doing everything to keep my composure like uh-huh okay uh, uh, we deep, love it deep breaths serenity. we know you love it when the show doesn't run smoothly <laughs> um i part. have uh speaking of um taxes uh d says taxes done and indeed his gifted five memberships thank you so much d uh i know which one you want it's this one right here hold on a sec well cheers biggies Uh, welcome to Fear Lantern, Chad, Mike, Robert, and Genuine Comics, all back again. Thank you so much. It's funny, like you see these guys, you know they were members before, but months they fly by quickly. We we notice that in our in our uh, monetization you know it, section. Twenty twenty five, and uh, and I'm bitterer than usual because I still haven't had my <laughs> golf cart tier bought. You know. <laughs> I wonder if it's any closer. Uh, Improbi says, Legendary D, Gifts with a Vengeance. Yeah, he does indeed. D, Sumo, Jim Cox, Nolan, Nate. You guys keep the lights on. Uh, You guys. I don't get any Jim Cox, nothing. Well, we each have our uh, wealthy benefactors. (laughs) I don't know who my specifically is then, but yeah. I'm sure there's someone who only... Chats to Camel Knights, but maybe Urashima. I don't know if Urashima. Yeah, yeah. The new show. I think I don't know if yeah, I don't know if he hangs out much here. Uh, mm-hmm. He's more yeah, he's more a, he's more a camel, a humper, as you call them. <laughs> Look at my little humpers <laughs> tonight. Mike TV Dub says D is the smoot of Bancroft streams. He really is. I mean, it's not even. I usually do um, the wrenchies. Actually, got to do that pretty soon, uh, where I award people in the chat for various things and uh yeah i'm gonna have, i'm gonna have a new category called most um but her starring me <laughs> most uh memberships gifted and i think i think d's got that one in the bag uh quite frankly although i've had some really 
super generous. Like, uh, who is it? Um, uh, Chrome. He's been going going nuts too as well. Actually, oh, got a Bogan chat here. Camel doesn't get any Jim Cox confirmed. That's from Smart Snarkicon. Can you confirm that you don't get any Jim Cox? No Jim Cox, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe one day. If I play Maybe my one day. Uh, Phil's in the house. All right. I suppose you better put on a show at some point. Do something. Stop talking. I know. Where's all my friggin'? Where's all my windows? I had uh, pre. I had pre-prepared things. Uh, let me share this. You guys will probably be familiar with this. You might have seen it before. Oh, look, we're shilling again. <laughs> ah, to the shillmobile. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we have a good reason. Because this is when is this running out? This thing. When is it running out? Tomorrow. So, tomorrow, probably about this time, I'll take this tier down. And, um, and then that'll be it. That'll be it for that. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's issue number zero and it has a pinup um, gallery in the back. Uh, so that's different than the issue number zero that's there currently. It's, it's this, this one cover. here. Yeah? yeah, it's that cover there. It won't have the title or the name tags on it, you know, and uh, I'll finish coloring it right now. Those are just the flats, but it's going to be in this, um, this lava foil, which you have, right? So it's yeah. this, this, yeah, um, it's great. One they're all cool they're all cool in there each uh different way actually let me go full screen on that so i can yeah there you go you can get uh, the let full, me just take it out because full effect i, full I effect. like the name tags i so mean what i think you. i'll do is i'll probably have like when you open it it'll be the first page with the name tags yeah but right. like for a cover i don't think it's very i don't think it's good and probably uh, says what the heck is lava fall it's that bro it's this here it's this here. So it's it's like it's like a special type of foil. Um, <laughs> Camel's like a Italian uh, furniture salesman. Is like, I have all the different foils. <laughs> Multiple marbles. So let me tell you about all the marbles. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you want for the finish? Uh, we got the lava foil. We got the we got the we got speckles. a speckle foil. Uh, what else we have here? We have a rainbow <laughs> foil, a confetti foil. You want a confetti foil? What a beautiful finish it is. So, uh, yeah, we'll do the lava foil for that. Um, it's issue number zero, which is like primarily the X Thems versus Comic Skaters book. And uh, when you click on it, all of the add ons are there. You can get the 3D issue, you can get issues one through three, you can get pretty much anything that you see on the campaign. Um, it will be going out tomorrow. So, if you want to get it, get it soon. We've already sold nine. I was hoping we'd sell 10. So, I mean, if we sell one more, I think I'll be happy. Because it also comes with, um, it comes in the shoebox. So if you guys got the shoebox tier, you can pick that up and it'll be in there. You don't have to buy it in addition. So, yeah. And because you are now, we're no, you're no longer tethered to Indiegogo's 30 and 30. Um, when are you going to start taking down the uh, Camel Knight stuff? Because you want to get very, started on that. So. Yeah. It's an interesting question because it will happen. We're going to be taking that stuff down. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know. Originally, I was thinking the 23rd. But the problem is when you do stuff like that, you know, you're sort of low-key initiating a closeout sale. And so yeah. if it's closeout, then it's telling people, well, buy now. And I don't know if that's a great idea to do to do that two days before Christmas. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe we'll do it um, maybe sometime uh, after the new year, maybe early in January. But I think that's when we'll do it. So when people are a little bit more flush again and they're not, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, buying presents for everyone, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You have to consider the patrons, you know, the people. Even I do it. <laughs> For whatever reason. You have to consider the wants and needs of the people. Uh, yeah. If you're going to be a magnanimous lord in the town. <laughs> Not occasion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have 100 yeah. people in here. Hail, uh, please do give the stream a like. Share it out. Let everyone know. We're going to chat about 
a bunch of stuff uh and we'll come back and we'll check out how the campaign is going throughout the course uh one something i did today uh i announced uh, i showed off my new cover to uh the lucent oh, waking the dream ready. second edition and i started the thing like this is i don't know this was like this represents about 45 minutes of work on shopify uh so there's the cover and essentially what i'm doing with this is i i want to have something for people who are just finding out about the lucent now uh i don't want to say oh i got painted death coming out uh if you want to get the first book we'll just back it on the painted death campaign and then wait however long that takes mm -hmm. um to be able to read waking dream because i'm i'm literally about to sell out of the first editions and I'm, I'm i'm someone who's always like always have something to sell kind of guy so i thought i could just make a shop for this i could could put it up on my ebay or i could test out this silly thing which is a shopify crowdfund plugin thing and I mean, it looks pretty cool so far. I haven't done any customization beyond this. I mean, for a basic, what, HTML layout, it looks fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've done, I've done nothing. It's not live yet, D. It's just, this is, this is, this is the preview. This is the live preview. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, you know, I haven't figured out if I can add other things to it, like other perks or like, cause it's, at the moment it's sort of it's set up like a cart you know like you add it to the oh, your okay. cart um so it's kind of like a, a store but it's got a crowdfunding thing on it see i so, like this edition because there's no interviews in the back yeah <laughs> yeah I think so exactly. i get to finish the you didn't have oh, to read them. oh great okay you didn't have and to read them. i like the cover it looks dope i'm really happy with it it's a it's pretty like i think it's a step up for me step forward so yeah. this will be interesting I'm, I'm hoping to get this up by sort of mid-december and i'm not it's like i don't really i don't have any it was i was just going to put up an ebay anyway so you know if i if i sell 30 i'll be happy you know because i don't know if any who knows whatever we'll see Doesn't oh matter. okay so you launching this see i was confused i for a second i thought this was the cover to part two and no, then i was no, like no. Hey, he's no, launching that Waking soon Dream. i was like but why that would <laughs> be all right no, okay no. that makes more, a no, lot more but sense. this will also be available on uh, uh, like this second edition will also be available on painted death campaign like so if you if you want this and you don't want to have to pay for shipping twice just wait i mean no skin off my nose uh i just um i just i just wanted to have something available for people who just want to grab it now and um and i wanted to test this out and see how it goes i'll be doing a i'll be doing a video a series of videos i guess on what it takes to actually set this up so that others can do it as well oh look who's here the guy who said i can't do the draw stream tonight guys okay if it was up to me, you'd never do any stream with us, but <laughs> I have to be nice. My mom says, I'll... be nice when Rob's around. I was like, all right. Uh, look, Dan's here, our favorite artist. Uh, he says, man, that image looks wild. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. Really happy. Um, what is everyone else saying here? Red traffic lights. Michael likes them. Yes, I did uh, go with red over green. That was a good idea. Whoever, whoever came up with it, there were there are no nipples. It's not to come. Zoom in. There will be no nipples. It doesn't matter how close you get in there. Um, and yeah. Um, I'm glad that it's done, so you can continue coloring uh, my covers. Yes. Yeah. This was the big mm, that I had to sort of get out of the way because yeah, yeah. I wanted to get started on this as well. So, yes. Uh, I received your. Um, Do you want to show mine first, and then what you're doing, or vice versa? Um, show yours mine's, first. Mine's just inks, you know. So yeah, show yours first, 
and then I'll I'll because then that'll give me time to open up what I've got so far. All right. I mean, it's not that go. it's not my, actually any further than how you saw it last, but um, well, let me take the uh, flats off so people. All right, there we go. I don't want to confuse people. All right, good to share. Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, so yeah, it looks terrible, like because it's the way it is. But if you uh, zoom in here. All of this is ready to go. Mm -hmm. Set this over to you. And yeah, I colored these or I uh, inked these guys in, inked that building back there, inked uh, this Captain America stand in. And I have all of this rock formation that I did since I've sent it to you. So I'm going to work on these guys this week. And then, and then I'll, my, my end will be done. And then so you're I, on the home stretch. I am. Yeah. I even like reworked the flats a little bit. So, like, because it, it is easier to see what's going on when you have color in it. Cause I was like, you know, his, he had a really big butt before. So I had to fix that up and his leg didn't come all the way down. I just forgot to draw it. So like there were little bits that I had to correct. Um, and then I also sent you some like corrected flats, like his colors were more turquoise and uh, yeah. he was a little bit more uh, dark gold. So, but yeah, I think it's coming out great. I'm very excited for it. And I have an idea. This is my idea. You tell me what you think. Um, so it's four issues. So I release it piecemeal, $25, $25, $25. And then the last one, $250. Uh, and my thinking is people will spend that because they want to complete the set. And uh, I think that's the best way to do it. Mike's thinking. $250. <laughs> for, the last, for the last cover, you know? Because then, and then people feel forced to buy it. That's my thought. D says, um, <laughs> "Not sure about that." This is coming from the man that drops twenty five dollars a stream. I you think recall that's... that's the ivory, the ivory tower exclusive. That's the that's ivory drift. <laughs> This, I, I this, think sums it's a up, this sums up how I feel about that. Uh, just <laughs> dot, dot, dot. All right, fine. I won't do it. I just thought I'd float it by you. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, you guys don't have the vision that I have. Why 250? Just... Shoot for 1,000. I mean, you didn't spend 250. 10,000. <laughs> a golf cart. How about this? You buy the golf cart. It comes with a copy, so you can finish it off. <laughs> The ivory grift says Fenrir fire. Unhinged thinks you're undercharging. Yeah, yeah. 250. Yeah. And bargain. Yeah. All right, fine. I'll put it out as one set. Unbelievable. I think that's probably best. I yeah. think that's probably best. Uh, the CAC Man special <laughs> says Nectagon. Yeah. Get cacked. You got cacked. All right. Let's uh, see Jason yours. says, why aren't you guys using OBS so you can set up your drawings as your windows? Well, because OBS, we can't bring other people on streams isn't that right i think you can I, I think you can oh now you can okay yeah back when i first started it didn't work well with mac and okay. now shant has done it he's figured it all out and um but i just i'm like i knows what i knows i likes what i knows and i likes what i knows you know just yeah i mean uh and plus you can see my beautiful it. face yeah it might be worth it on mac because on Mac, like the way you share audio is fucking awful. Or, like, and anything mm. really sucks. Like, it, it, StreamYards works a lot better on PC. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll look into it. I like the way StreamYards is working right now, though. I have all of my shit there. You know, yeah. I've got my, we can now play music in the background. So, oh, okay, great. Very good. All right, so I haven't really done all that much. As I said to you before going live, today is one of those days where it's just like, I had to I had to send some test things to print, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll knock this out in thirty minutes. Two and a half oh, hours yeah. later, after all yeah. the pre press and effing around, and now uh, I'm doing test prints with Mixum. They want the covers separated and the spine separated. Yeah, give me strength. All right, I guess I got to make this now. Um, but uh, yeah, so. That's all done now, thankfully. That's but, interesting yeah. that you didn't. That that's how like printer I work with. That's always how it's been. 
but I guess if you're not used to it, it definitely is an extra task. It's no, it's no problem. It's no problem. I just hadn't had it set up. Oh, so okay. I um I can see where the yeah he had a big butt. Yeah, look how big that was. It was so ridiculous, <laughs> and I was like, that doesn't look right. And I kept you know because like I do the outline first, and then I start yeah. doing the inks inside. And it, like it just it didn't look right. I was like, "What the hell is going on with his leg here?" And I was like, "Oh, his butt's too big. All right, I gotta trim that down." So we've got um we got Pums back in the chat here. Did you see his his trailer for his for his uh I, comic? Yes, I did. It's very good. I did see it. Yeah, I did see it. Really him. good. Everyone, go check that out. It's a really good looking book. Unfortunately, I just realized after the show that uh, he's not shipping to Australia. So I'm uh... right there. I meant to tell you on robust. Oh, okay. On his shoulder. That's mm -hmm. um, that's that's more cape up here. No, on the other on the on the other side. You have oh, this. Like some type oh, yeah, that makes pile. sense. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. not just another plate of <laughs> it's a plate, weirdly yeah. folded. Metal. He got mosquitoes, um, turquoise in. That looks in great. Here, but I, yeah. I changed the turquoise, but I got to put the yellow in. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, sure. And then uh, what else? You got you got Claude Agent's um, turquoise eyes. Yeah, I'm gonna fix. And his he mouth. drank some milk or what the? <laughs> he eats a powdered donut. It's not milk, bro. <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't milk. know the heart it's to tell you. <laughs> What he's been up to. I mean, look, he's at top fight <laughs> on boots. <laughs> Someone's going to make that their profile pic. <laughs> gonna wipe your, uh, it's going to be me. Got to wipe your face there, buddy, before you uh, yeah. step out from behind the... <laughs> Yikes. But uh, yeah, now this is going to look great. Uh, I mean, this is literally just first pass. Like, this is the... Um, it just these are just Ooh. masks essentially that I'll use for the for the highlights um, to kind of give them depth, uh, and then I've got these. These are sort of these add the depth to it, so they're the shadows there. Oh, that's cool! I like that. Yeah. Um. So it just it just gives them much more of a three dimensional yeah thing, and it's not really related to the light source. That's where the highlights come in. Oh yeah, I remember uh, I told you yesterday too. It was like you know, take your time with it. You know, let's get it right. There's no reason to rush. I was like, you know, you can take months on it. And you were like, I'm not taking months on it. <laughs> I have other shit to do. <laughs> I know. I, know right? I, like, I would just say take two your months time. Working on this piece. Yeah. You're, uh, we'll, get it. we'll get it done. It's your last supper. I know. Well, it, it could be as good. You never know. You know, it's interesting. It, you know, it's based off of that Jim Lee X-Men book. I realized as I was drawing it, I was like, it's actually an expanded version of the first issue of X-Men, but in reverse. So like the first issue of X-Men has Magneto in the foreground mm. and all the X-Men are coming at him. Yep. And then this is just, you know, it's Magneto in the, in the foreground, but all the X-Men are right behind him. So it's actually kind of a clever way to redo, you know, the first issue without completely redoing it the same way. Is that, is that just a way that you can call yourself clever? Well, <laughs> you can also just uh, rip the entire cover off like I did. <laughs> That's pretty clever. So. Uh, Angela Curry says, will we ever see the Shane Davis cartoon? Yes. Yes, you will. Um, I am. I don't know. I don't have anything to say other than I have been putting it off to get uh, basically more of my comic done. And uh, but. I am determined to get it out. It's going to be great. I, I really stand by it. It's a really funny rant. It, it's got good visual language in it. I think you guys are going to love it. But, you know, these things, it's like I, I, I don't have um, I don't have two weeks to sort of take off and do a cartoon. Yeah. Uh, and that's how long it takes me to do these things. I'm well, when I, when Jose, I, I'm you know, going to see you finish the inks on this. And then as soon as that's done, because the campaign is up and running, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to do the next possibly last hail salad. So that'll come out. I don't know if it'll come out by Christmas, but it'll definitely come out soon, soon after maybe new year's. Maybe we'll do a new year's show and release it. 
People don't remember that I did this. Where is it? I did this. I'm coming through. When he's doing his new thing. He looks very tired. <laughs> <laughs> he was not with enthusiastic. And neither would have I been either. It just keeps going. I was like, is this on loop? No, no, it's, a, no, like... there was a bit left. I didn't realize it was so long. It's like a minute. <laughs> Jesus. You gotta cut that down. I mean, I love Sumo Shane as much as the next guy. Actually, let me show you something um, I showed off the other day uh, because I do believe he'll be making a uh, or he's interested in doing a um, an entry for your uh, competition. Your um, your boots and heels art competition. Who Shane is or you? No, I want to show you a guy. Now I'm looking for it. Now I can't find it because I don't know. God damn it! It's uh, he's one of those guys on Twitter. He's called Hyper Wizard. You know him from the chat. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah, one of those guys who's like, I'm not going to spell my name Hyper Wizard. I'm going to spell my name like Hyper Wizard with a weird, you know, well, isn't Greek it letters H -Y -P? in it? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, but so that you can't find me on um, uh, I guess on Twitter. Hyper. Glorious Rex Art Contest. I don't know what the hashtag is. I'm guessing it's just that. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Hopefully. And uh, maybe it will be. Hyper Wizard, why are you doing that to us? Anyway, well, he said you know he was interested. Yeah, you know who else did that? They really fucked me up. Uh, you. <laughs> I always write B-A-N and Bancroft pops up. And then you changed it to like the Lucent comic. I had no idea where you were. Was no, it was always the Lucent comic. I changed it to Mr. Ambassador Triple Crown. Oh, even better. Yeah. So I could never find you. And I was like, I guess he's, is he, what do he get kicked off of Twitter with choke out? What are we doing? No, no. That's a shame. I wanted to show you this, um, this piece because he, yeah, he said he will be, he's interested in doing a, um, a boots and heels one, but, uh, you can't find him. Sorry, man. I don't know how to spell hyper wizard in your weird Greek phonetics that you've got set up not that not that uh talented oh well um i do have this i can show you though this is funny von shared this earlier <laughs> this stuff makes me laugh tim tim burton is getting dragged for wednesday's tone deaf delivery of inclusivity what you think what do you think this is about guess Okay, so I assume at some point she must stand in front of a crowd of people and talk about how she needs to be included and black people and white people need to live together or some bullshit like that. She's like Mexican or something, isn't she? She's Latino. Yeah. She's Latinx. And there was, they tried to drum up some uh they tried to drum up some controversy about that that oh everyone's gonna go crazy about the the race swap but i think like i think the family was is supposed to be originally they're supposed to be spanish or something like that i don't know I think they are yeah but uh that's not no that's not what happened at all let's scroll down i don't know how uh how quickly it gets into this uh, well, let's just go to the to the tweets. That's probably the best place to look. I really wanted to like Wednesday, but I think it's unforgivable that all the black characters are either bullies or morally compromised. Why is Wednesday so hostile towards them? What the f? 
what kind of ridiculous writing is this? The new Wednesday show has a black bully character, of course. Uh, anyone else bothered that the token black kids in Wednesday are basically a king and queen bully? This is not how you do inclusivity. Tim Burton is a racist. Hashtag. So essentially they've got characters, black characters in the show who are less than angels. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Right. In fact, some of them are bullies. And that makes Tim Burton a racist because he's presenting because that because they see a black character as an avatar for all black people. And therefore Tim Burton is racist and it's tone deaf. Uh I every day I wake up and I realize more and more that the internet was a mistake. People <laughs> they they should not be allowed to say what they're thinking ever. Unless you're a uh, wealthy male landowner, I don't want to hear it. I'm just like, it's just, it's the same garbage over and over and over. You know, people pick up these microphones and they just scream nonsense. And, and then this bullshit website gives them a platform by reposting it. It's, 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 it's like, there's no fixing it except for charging people to comment. That's the only way. Would you pay the eight dollars for that? Uh, you were mentioning earlier that edit um that edit button. Would you pay eight dollars for that to be able to edit your tweets for up to two minutes afterwards? I would pay eight dollars if everyone had to pay eight dollars. If they're like, this is the Twitter model now. Uh, this you know. was Vaughn's response to that article, which I th I showed this on the stream uh, yesterday, the other day, which I just was just so good. So it's like it doesn't matter what you do. Oh yeah, the black guy's the bad guy, or the victim, or both, or not in it at all. It doesn't matter what one you do. You're racist no matter what. You know it's racist, uh, uh, imposing black people into everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and wondering where they are if they're not there. It's like, why is it always on your mind, bro? Like, it's always oh, it's living like, rent free in your head. Always. If you make your characters an avatar for an entire demographic, then you yeah. can't do anything to them. They can't be interesting. It used to be called the guy. What's his name? From um, uh, the. Oh god, um the Monkey Island game. Guy. Oh, I never played that. I don't know. Oh, it's a great game. He's, anyway, it used to be called that. And it's essentially a, an internet meme theory that says if uh, that character essentially is just a complete loser. You couldn't imagine a character that is less suited to being a pirate. But He's the main guy, Threepwood. Guy Brush Threepwood, thank you. Uh, M15T3R. <laughs> How am I supposed to read these names? Is that Mr.? That's Mr. Mr. V. Mr. Yeah. V. Yeah, he's like, you couldn't imagine a guy who's less suited to being a pirate, right? And everything he does, he sucks at and he fails and they just throw this crap at him the whole game. And it's a fantastic game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And the whole point of the meme is you couldn't have made him a woman because women have to be perfect. Women have to be angels. Women have to be the best. And you can't mistreat them because they really mistreat this guy throughout the whole game. And it's fun. Uh, you can't mistreat women because that's representing of all women. It's the same now with black people as well. You can't have a black thug because that says all black people are thugs. You can't have a guy who isn't a thug because then you're just trying to make the black guy white. You can't have just black guys because then that's perpetuating a harmful myth. And then you can't not have black guys because then you're racist because you got no, because Oscar's so white. It's like, well, it's like a couple of years ago when they made that Doctor Strange movie and they had to change the ancient one. They changed it to Tilda Swinton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they were like, and then people were upset. They were like, well, why is it a, a, a white woman? And it was, you know, it's just like, well, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I was like, what? The, the issue is if it's a race, no matter what the race is, we, it can't be represented in any light. And, and 
if you do represent it, it it just it has to be an absolute shining example of what that thing is, or that that person is, which is inherently racist. That's the definition of, of what it is. It's just like, well, I, I assume personally that this this creed of people are always like this. So I need to see the opposite every time to ensure that they're not. And that's I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. It, your boy Zach talks about it a lot. He calls them the soulful saints. That's what, how they portray black people. Like black women, uh, especially when they're older, they become these wise sages uh, of just pure goodness and wisdom. Oh, like and, in entertainment, you mean? In media. Yeah, in entertainment. Yeah. yeah. And that's the only way you're allowed to present them. And they just have so much knowledge to impart us uh, uh, ignorant technological um, fools. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Phil Anton says, if everything you see is through a race lens, I got news for you. You are racist. Yeah. Well, that's exactly. it. I mean, they are. It's the same thing with uh, natives as well, like indigenous people. They're like, they're so in touch with, the land and their spirituality that they know things that we couldn't ever possibly understand because we're so divorced from their inner sight or some shit like that. And it's like, you know, your portrayal of all these different people like this is inherently a kind of actually a sort of white supremacist view of yeah. uh of these different groups well also being self-deprecating on that level is an inherent elitist uh viewpoint about everything because it's all just guilt so it's like i can't you know everything needs to be reversed and you know i'm the reason for all of it but you're not willing to really do anything about it right you're not giving up your cash you're not like giving up your your seat at school or your, you know, whatever it is that you feel that you've been privileged. You're not moving over for someone else. It's just, well, if I talk about it enough, I don't feel so bad inside. It's like, well, so you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite and a racist. Awesome. Cool. We, um, we reelected, uh, Dan, <laughs> Dan Andrews, uh, our premier. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and it's actually, they're calling it a Dan slide. Oh, good. <laughs> he absolutely, he absolutely just crushed it. I mean, the, um, the, uh, we call them the liberal. It's so bizarre. I was telling this to my daughter yesterday because she was like, why is it red and blue? It's so confusing because in the States, your guys, blue is the left, red is the right. Liberal is the left. Here in Australia, blue is the right, red is the left, liberal is the right, or it's it's supposed to be. Um, wow. But um, yeah, so they got completely demolished, absolutely. I mean, decimated, and uh, and I was just I just responded to a tweet on Twitter, and I was like, well, you know, they have we haven't had an actual conservative a galvanizing conservative figure in Australia in 15 years. We've had politicians, but they're very divisive. Mm -hmm. um, like they weren't really, I don't know. They weren't able to like actually speak to people and reach people. And I said, on top of that, the, the liberals here who were the right wing, supposed to be the right wing, are center left at this point. They yeah. all the same talking points. Remember when the lockdowns were going on, um, that uh, they the, the guy who is you know supposed to be conservative wasn't arguing against these camps that they were building. He was saying, "Oh, they're not building them fast enough. They're incompetent in how fast they they should be building. They need to be building them faster." That just goes to show how incompetent they are. And uh, anyway, I said this tweet and someone came back to me and said, are you out of your mind? They're far, far, far right. I was just like, oh, okay. 
You can't. Yeah. What are you going to do? Again, no one should be allowed on the internet but me. Yeah. Like, where do I start a conversation with someone who thinks this clearly? Okay, I'll give it to you. Maybe they're centrist. From my point of view, they're center left. So we've got socialist left and center left. That's our options. And it's no wonder that the center left are getting their asses kicked uh, because. They're not appealing to the conservatives anyway. Mm-hmm. And, and and they're trying to tell me that they're far, far right. Because, you know, to these people, anyone sort of to the right of Marx. Oh, yeah. You're a, a skinhead Nazi. and Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what we have four more years of that to look forward to. Time to uh, move, bro. <laughs> Time to get the F out of there. If we move, though, we just, it's like California, you know, you just abandon it to them great let them have it you and i will ride golf carts all around my little <laughs> village area <laughs> joust yeah could be the way to do it um boots and heels uh the uh variant 25 dollars for the zero edition lava foil variant that and it closes tomorrow we're trying to get to 10 on this bad boy did we get one i don't know if we did we got 140 we did Look at that! Hey, we you know what? Ten's great, but fifteen is real. That's a it's just a <laughs> fifteen is like a well, real number. Work, you know? Okay, yeah, fifteen, fifteen could work. Fifteen could work. This is actually moving now. Um, it's <laughs> <Excuse> funny. <me? laughs> no, but you know, like you were trying to get to twenty five for like, and I seemed like a week. And oh it yeah, no, it is like, moving. I mean. <clears throat> And then you passed 25, and now it's like, oh, now it's 25. Yeah, I mean, we might be able to get to 26 by next Friday is what I'm thinking. So 26 would be good. Mahajano says, Bancroft, Floridian, madness. I don't do well with humidity, Camel. Wait, what? How do do I deal with humidity? No, I don't. I don't do well with it. Mel is even worse. Oh, I thought. I thought you said, how do you deal with humility, Camel? I was like, I don't. No, no. We know how that. We know <laughs> that. Hey, I don't have any. Note. So it's easy. <laughs> 20. We need to sell 20 uh, coverings tonight, guys. All right. We're halfway there. Yeah, let's sell them. We want to sell it. The last one's 250 bucks. Fucking $1,000. <laughs> I mean, if you're a real fan, you're going to pay for that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> All right. What else have I got here? All right, let's um change beats here, and I want to I want to show you this thing that we watch. I want to ask your guys' opinion. Has anyone watched this Warrior Nun TV series? Uh, I what I remember I watched the first season while I was drawing, so don't shoot me if it's like terrible. I I'm not like paying super attention. It's a you can see here. It is a um, it's a comic. Uh, it's based on a comic. They made a, they made a Netflix show about it. Um, has anyone watched it? Cheap as fuck. Oh yeah. Yeah. The actual show. It's very, um, it's a bit CW. Yeah. It looks it, but actually they go to lots of different locations, but I don't know if they just bought B roll of, you know, drone shots and stuff. Probably. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, and it's it's all it's like an all obviously it's about warrior nuns so it's it's like very female orientated. That's um, blasphemous. And apparently, like the a halo is an actual device that you can insert into your back, and it gives you oh. superpowers. Okay. Hello. That's not from the show. <laughs> Rob would like that. Yeah, you got to be careful, right. you know, doing your search like this because you might find some i know right picks well this is the comic on the right and that's the the show i mean it's not like she's not worried she's yeah she's she's always worried yeah she's not yeah her name's aurelia what would god think as he stabbed someone multiple times (laughs) i kind of went in a different direction uh, all right, let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, Her name is Ariola. Sounds stupid. SDA read the comic. Is Enrique the watched the first episode. Yeah, I think it's it's quite old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
McShort says, sounds dumb. B-Rose is laughing. Enrico says, it's basically a girl grows up and finds herself. Oh, that sounds yeah. great. Can't wait. It what? was so weird, though. It was so... That's The point I'm making, Nolan, is... <laughs> Nolan's like, wrap it up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It was such a weird show. Like, th- I'm talking about the way it was structured. I couldn't make mm-hmm. heads or tails of it. It's like they were just throwing things at me. Didn't know what the hell was going on. Are you get yeah, Ariola. I think that's her name. Well, I, I, I mean, I watched the first season like two years ago. It was really weird because it ended, it, it ended on a cliffhanger. Except it wasn't a cliffhanger. It was in the middle of a battle. So oh. it's like we're gonna fight now. Ah, end. <laughs> what? Okay. That's not the end of a season. And I didn't think it would ever come back. Uh, and we had nothing to, you know, that happens sometimes. You're between yeah, shows, yeah. got nothing to watch. Uh, Mel's already got the phone out. She's looking at other stuff. I'm like, well, I'll just put this on and, you know, see if I can and draw and understand yeah. a friggin' thing. And I wanted to see if anyone, it looks like no one in the chat has watched this thing. We watched a movie tonight called Memory. Have you heard of this? It's an Amazon. I don't know if it's exclusive to Amazon Prime, but it's awesome. It's great. It's like you think it's going to be one of these. It's like Liam Neeson movie. You think it's be one of these throwaway like shot for, a you know, the budget of a bag of potato chips. And it's like, you know, I have a certain set of skills and I'm going to punch you in the lungs. You know, it's like you think it's going to be one of those. And it's not. It's like it's a real movie. It's by Martin Campbell, who did. um Zorro, Casino Royale, um, he did Gold, Golden Eye, and it's he is an assassin, but he has Alzheimer's, and he can't remember like like where that that's sort of it's not really the the main point of the movie essentially, but he gets um, involved where he's he's sent to do a hit on this little girl, and the little girl is being protected by uh, Guy Pierce, who is an FBI agent. And it's, it's just really good. I mean, it's, it's almost surprising that they can still make good movies. Uh, I would highly recommend it. It was, it was like, it it, it felt like a movie that came out 15 years ago. Does Liam Neeson have one look (laughs) these days? He's just got that. Well, so if you go to Amazon or wherever, like, you know, probably even here, like on Google and you do Liam Neeson movies, he has like. It's all the same poster with a different name on that. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> yeah. It's all the same sort of yeah. three quarter. The Marksman is the same poster. Yeah. Thousand yard stare. He's on his phone a lot. Like he's looking worried. That's his thing. This is his money shot now, these days. Oh, Him there was the a phone. line in there where he's like, yeah, he says something like, I have a I have a special set of skills. You know, <laughs> and you're like, oh, they, <laughs> they found a way to get that in there. What was interesting is as we're watching, I'm like, God, this really feels like a Bond movie. And then when I found out, you know, at the end it says directed by Martin Campbell, I was like, oh yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But I would, I would highly recommend it. It was so much is it, is it new or is it old? Is it came new? out this year? Oh wow. Yeah, it came out. It's straight it's, to Amazon you know, Prime. I think, yeah. I what I, I we started watching a lot more Amazon because they have like a lot of exclusive like stuff. Yeah. And it's always much more high caliber, high tier stuff. And Netflix is like, you know, that's bargain bin. Fatty, yeah, I, I have a particular set of facial features <laughs> that, that make me very marketable. I have a giant nose. Look at this nose. I have an interesting yeah. accent. You can't quite pick it when I'm in these movies. <laughs> uh, Snatchgun says, I like his appearance on Family Guy. My favorite. Uh, cameo of liam neeson of all time is in the um ricky gervais warwick davis show where he have you seen that show yeah i've seen it. i don't know where if he I goes in and clip, like but... he, he he wants to do stand-up comedy oh i have seen it it's great and it's <laughs> awful. he's like he comes in he busts into a ricky gervais's office and Stephen Merchant is there, and Warwick Davis is there, and he's like, "I want to do, I want to do stand-up comedy, improvisation, improvisational, everything." And he's like, 
<laughs> and, they, and that so they, they do a role play is like and a doctor's like knock knock i have aids my body's riddled with it <laughs> and he's playing it so straight uh it was it's it's freaking amazing he's very funny he did another movie uh, with Ed Harris that I quite like. I like the cinematography in it. And it's like Ed Harris, he, I, again, he's like an assassin or a cop or something. And he accidentally kills Ed Harris's son. And Ed Harris is the mob boss of New York or wherever they are. And so he gives, because they used to work together, used to be friends or something. He gives um, Liam Neeson to like the morning uh to to live or run or something like that so the whole movie is a cat and mouse until you know the end when Liam Neeson wins because that's what he does because that's what I do god what was it called um, I can't remember what it was called death by night or something this kind of relates to this we're talking about Amazon um I saw this earlier I don't know what the hell it is I I, I didn't pull it up because I you know whatever but um Movie theater stocks pop after a report says Amazon plans to spend a billion dollars on releases. Wouldn't it be great to just be a company that's like, we're going to invest another billion dollars in something that we want to do. We, we, we tried to do Lord of the Rings. That didn't work. Put a billion dollars into that. Let's do this. I don't know why they need to spend a billion dollars. Can't they just put their movies can't they just distribute them? I, maybe I just don't understand how it works. Wait, what's, so what, what are they offering here? I'm, I'm confused. No, no, no. Tech company plans to make between 12 and 15 movies for theaters. What's the difference about a movie like that you just talked about with Liam Neeson that went straight to Amazon Prime and one that goes to the movies? I mean, other than distribution. Well, yeah, it's an interesting what... thought because this is what I was saying to my wife when we were watching this thing. You know, a couple of years ago, this movie would have been advertised. And there's virtually no advertising these days unless it's a multi, multi million dollar movie. But it actually becomes problematic because then you, you have this sort of onslaught of films that come out and I've never heard of them. And there's so many of them because the barrier to entry is pretty shallow, not as bad as it used to be. So it's like, I can, I can go make a movie, right? If I have a couple million bucks or if I can invest or whatever it is and I can, you know, get a, a D tier actor, I can get my movie up on Netflix. But now that's just another box clicking around that I have to surf through to get to something else. And so like, you know, when you're, when you are, you flood the market like that, it's really difficult to find interesting stuff. And, you know, obviously if you're on Netflix, you have no money for marketing. There's no, there's no budget there. To, to is that the budget? It. Is that the difference? It's the marketing budget that they have. Yeah, Cause so it's, like, it's here when, that when they've a, put out film, movies before. When a film comes out, if they have a decent budget, they spend half of it on marketing. That's how yeah. you know about it. Yeah. And that's so what I said. There's no marketing budget. Then it's just another, you know, thing that's out there. That was my conclusion that I hadn't seen anyone talk about on that friggin' Disney flop um what strange world and everyone's talking about how disney didn't advertise it uh and i'm like yeah because they tested it and it tested trash clearly uh -huh. i mean it's getting terrible reviews from everyone so they were thinking well do we sink another 108 because they spent 180 million dollars on a cartoon on an animation apparently it looks pretty but it's a trash movie uh, and it's got a very limited demographic um, and they've already kind of pissed everyone off with their parents act thing, got, like taking the side of the, uh, the don't say gay people or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were like, well, do we sink another $180 million in advertising this or do we just punt it and take it on the chin? I think that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say the theaters are about dead at this point. I mean, because even even if they did well this year, you know, that could be like a slow, you know, sort of spike surge because people are happy to be out of lockdown. But for the most part, I think I think the writing's on the wall that it's never it's it will never ever ever be what it used to be. Uh, what's it? You know, I think Endgame was the last blockbuster to ever hit the theater. 
I think they're going to try real hard. What about, with yeah, what too, about um, but that ain't happening. What about uh, Top Gun? Again, I think that was part of the spike surge. I think people were excited because they can go see something in the theater. I would, I would be very surprised if that continued to be a trend. Because Rob Liefeld thinks that Avatar 2 is going to absolutely crush everything in its path. Cameron is a visionary. His influence is all over the culture. Ass is in the seats every time. What do you think? I don't agree with a lot of Liefeld anything. <laughs> So I, I, I disagree. Uh, maybe, Hey, I, you know, prove me wrong. I love being proved wrong, but I can't imagine, you know why? Cause there's no buzz for it. I mean, like no one's the fuck talking, is talking about, about it. About it? No one's talking about it. Yeah. It's like, and then you see the trailers, like you would see, let's say an Avengers trailer on Twitter have, you know, a million views on it. You see a, an avatar trailer is like 12,000 views. on it. <laughs> I'm like, really? Wow. I mean, like, yeah, oh, yeah, and, and um, shit, when I put my Hail Salad trailer out, I think we got five or 6,000 views on that, so it's just like, you know. Did Hail Salad make uh, half a billion dollars? <laughs> I mean, I think, I, I would, I don't know, I mean, maybe I'll see it, but like, again, too, it's like, why, do I want to go to the theater to watch a four-hour movie, on top of when this came out, the first one? It was being sold on this is the next wave of 3D. I haven't seen anything about this in 3D or otherwise. So, which makes me think it's probably not, which means that, you know, there's nothing particularly special or gimmicky about it. It's just Cat People, the movie, part two, underwater. <laughs> you didn't like the hair rape of the animal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, not not for me. You know. How about the unobtainium? No, I liked Avatar. I thought it was good, but I'm with I'm with uh, forty percent Zed. It's like it's ten years too late for me to care. On top of that, it's thirteen we've years. Seen bro. It the first with, one came out in nine. Wow, we've seen it with um, comics. Yeah, so there used to be a culture where young boys from the age of about 10 to about 15 got into comics whether it was for a year or longer or whatever or if you were like of that age you at least bought some comics at some mm -hmm. point that's gone that hasn't happened in uh you know 20 years you know it'll be it's the rare kid that'll actually go into a comic book store and you know buy something so that was a part of the culture that was lost and now everything that's happening in comic books is sort of a reflection of that, you know, the 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 result of that, and the fact that it's only guys like us who are I still think too, buying. The the internet has this miraculous ability to make time stand still, where it's like everything is still relevant, and like you can just look things up, and that's why you know bygone eras don't feel like they were so long ago. Why people are like, oh, you know, when was the '90s? That was five years ago. No, bro, that was hmm. twenty. 26 years ago like and yeah, so a long time ago it, yeah and pe it's harder for people to wrap their heads around because the internet like makes everything at a standstill and so the idea of seeing real change is like foreign and it's like no but change happens and it's happening now and because we're used to it not moving at the, the, the pace that we're used to then now suddenly it's it's like really hard to wrap your head around well yeah the the, the kind of the point i'm trying to make here is that that culture of you know boys reading comics and then a percentage of them eventually you know keeping up with it into adulthood ended in the west uh and now like when i was younger we all went to the movies it was a part of our childhood it was a yeah. part of our teenage years it was a part of our dating when we were in our early 20s um and then it's just, I don't, I don't know if it's me because I'm a father now and I just, you know, have less time to take the kids, but like, we don't even consider the movies as a entertainment thing. We'll do a hundred other things before we'll take them, before we'll shell out $150 to spend two hours or whatever at a theater to watch something that might suck. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not on the cards anymore. And I wonder how many people are like that. I mean, 
then you look at all the numbers, they're like, they're pretty abysmal. And, and that, that's not that, that article I showed earlier said that exact same thing. I was just scrolling through it. It said, you know, there's the occasional blockbuster. I'm thinking like Spider-Man or Top Gun that will, yeah, like break records. But in between that, it's, it's a ghost town in there. Yeah. Well, uh, how's your father says, on the other hand, when was the last time James Cameron had a flop? Well, so here's the point. Uh, they used to say that about Pixar, right? Every Pixar movie is great. And then, you know, Cars 2 came out and people were like, wait, what is this? This is this is trash. And, yeah. you know, it's inevitable for everybody. There's there's nobody. They said that about George Lucas. I mean, like, you know, it was like, he can't do wrong. And then I was like, oh, wait, hold on. Let me, you know. I guess he can. Me, yeah, let me rethink that. And so... I, I mean, look, maybe this one does well enough. I think he did three. I think he filmed three of them. So there's three more movies, four in total, including the first one. So it's like, if this doesn't do rocket success, the second one, I mean, what are they, is they going to cut it up, put it in a TV show on Disney Plus? Are they going to make it, you know, on Blu-ray? Like, there's got to be a way to put out the last two. I don't, I don't know what that market is. I mean... It might be, I mean, unless this one's absolutely insane, but again, like there's no buzz for it. People, the buzz for this, the, it needed to come out before 2012 because 2012 is essentially when the superhero movies became a genre large enough that they were the only thing. Cause he had that amazing Spider-Man he had dark Knight rises and he had the Avengers come out. And then after that, it was all, you know, Avengers and DC movies, yeah. or Marvel and DC movies. But they didn't do it. And so it's like, yeah, I don't, at this point, I think it might just be too little too late. Pig Riser says, honestly, the last film I saw in a cinema was Borat. I don't even remember. It's that long ago. I don't remember. It was definitely before the pandemic. I, I couldn't tell you. Actually, no. It may have been The Rise of Skywalker. Which I wasn't gonna go see. I've said this before, but my buddy was like, "I'll take you," like a like a date. <laughs> he was yeah. like, "I'll take you. I'll pay for it. Um, just come, you know, just come and check it out." And actually, I ended up enjoying it because I didn't care. You know, I was just like, you know, that's I a, that's just a- uh, finished the uh, the Boba Fett show. I didn't hate it. I know, you know, like people are like, "You gotta hate it," but I'm like, no, I thought it was quite fine yeah, yeah you know, i was the I'm same just, with yeah i was the I'm same with like, I, rings of power was, yeah yeah i'm just like yeah i don't know i mean it had it had a story it didn't feel like contrived they changed boba fett's character but then i'm also like but he was never like a really he was in like fucking three and a half minutes of empire so it didn't bother me too much and yeah when I would you say, said that yeah when you said that to me originally i was like yeah i couldn't do that because i i really really liked boba fett so i i didn't even like seeing him in mandalorian i was like get this fat guy off my screen yeah that is not boba fett like how did he get so old and pack on all those pounds uh it was just bizarre bizarre casting choice uh, the whole the whole way i mean as so i was like no nah, that would annoy me to watch boba fett um how's your father says no you're supposed to hate it well i found out when i said you know what i didn't hate rings of power to the same extent that everyone else did despite agreeing with all the critiques from critical drinker from uh nerd Roddick, from clownfish all the guys all the all the regular people i agreed with all their critiques i think they were sp- spot on still didn't hate it i was like whatever yeah i just was like yeah like you know there were a lot of memes running around of like can you believe they did this shot or this scene and i was like who cares it was like four, four and a half seconds. And uh, out of the, I don't know, seven hours of entertainment I got that there were like two or three moments where I was kind of like winced. I was like, it's not enough to hate the whole fucking thing. I'll say this though. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it, if you don't like Bubba Fett, just watch the last three episodes. Cause they are a hundred percent just Mandalorian episodes. Like, no, so if you, and it starts right as Mandalorian drops off uh, baby Yoda and then, and like, and I think episode two, no, I'm sorry. Episode five and six are all Mandalorian. I don't even think Boba Fett's in them. Um, 
I think uh, Snapgun says, I saw Rise of Skywalker. Compared to Last Jedi, it was a step up. I think that's what it is. Last Jedi broke me. <laughs> it it broke the part of me inside me that actually cares about these things. After the Last Jedi, I I couldn't I couldn't muster any effort to care about any of this stuff to the point where they would upset me. Uh, just like what you know, oh look, this is happening. Okay, whatever. I agree with you. It's dumb. It's contrived. Eh, doesn't bother me. Whatever. Like I just. It is what it is. Uh, the Last Jedi sent me into. Actually, it was probably the the double punch of the Last Jedi and Game of Thrones season eight. The one oh, two yeah. punch that just floored me, and I just couldn't. Uh, I'm a broken man after that. Shaggy Bear for five. Check out Oral Noughts on YouTube. They do great Star Wars parody. Yeah, they uh, Bear. they they're pretty good. They what they 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 just dub it. They lip sync it with like their own stuff. And uh, they've been doing it for 10 years. It's pretty funny stuff. Uh, Ray. Ray. Tug's web guy. How you going, Ray? Ray? Did, you, did you see I... Um, he probably didn't because he's just gotten here. I uh, started my um, thing here. This is a Shopify crowdfund plugin thing. Uh, it's... I just started it. I mean, I just plonked it in there. There's been nothing changed other than you know, I just put the title in and stuff like that. But uh, but I, I say that because Ray is actually, he's a web guy. Like, he does this. So uh, he very graciously reached out and said, hey, if you need any help on anything, um, let me know. So far, it seems to be pretty straightforward. I mean, Shopify is very user-friendly, but it's very out of the box. So if you wanted to do something that isn't already set up for you, it might be a little bit difficult. So I, I may have to reach out to you, Ray, but I'll let you know. Um, Marby Dog says Lucent is better than Rings of Power. I mean, I agree with that, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, Pork says, are you still going to release on Indiegogo? This is just for the Waking Dream reprint. It's all it is. I was just going to put it up on eBay. Um, it will be available on the Painted Death campaign as well as an add-on or as part of a perk, you know, the buy, you know, you get the one and two together, but uh, this is me just seeing if I can actually do this. So mm. this won't be on Indiegogo as a, as a crowdfund, um, but it will appear on Indiegogo as part of the painted death campaign. Hope that makes sense. Um, we're also trying to get camel to, we're trying to get him back as a, uh, no more. We're trying to get him up to 15 of this uh, lava foil variant. It's love. It's a foil <laughs> created in the in the pits of Mount Doom, <laughs> which <laughs> is what powers the Ivory Tower. You guys don't know that. It's uh, an evil volcano. Yeah, like it's it's very special. You know, it's very rare. Uh, so, uh, but I think, uh, you know, it'll be up all day. It'll be up essentially for another 22 hours. So we'll see what happens, uh, tomorrow. Um, but you know, I'm glad that we got to 10, but if you guys want it, I promise you it will be coming down. Uh, I know, uh, Aldous and some other people were like, oh, I totally am going to get that. So I'm just putting it out there. If you're watching this on replay, it will be coming down. But if you get the shoe box, it'll be in there. So if you, you know, you don't, don't feel like you have to get two of them. If you miss out, you're going to pay more. That's how Camel does it. He squeezes you. Squeezes you. I Emma think... Louis... Go ahead, Sorry, go ahead. Go. No, go. No, go ahead. I was going to say, first. why do comic creators not do full animation? When I look at this Lucent cover, I feel like I want to see that Lucent movie. It doesn't exist. <laughs> um, Actually, there's a couple. If you scroll up, uh, there's an animated trailer here. On, yeah, let's uh, watch that. Actually, that's, a good, that's what a good segue. What a good Thank segue. You. I was just going to say, I was going to say, Professor Murph, who does War Party, is an animator. And Oh, I didn't know that. He, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's no like a, a full-on professional. He actually, and he's a professor of animation and art as well, too. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the reason why it doesn't happen, I think, Emma, is because he spent the last seven years trying to get a, f a feature completed. Mm. Um, and it's just, 
it's just that it's just an insane yeah. amount of work an insane amount of time and money i mean i would love to see it as well but um you know it's hard enough it's it's hard enough takes long enough just to uh make the comic that doesn't move i know i mean well i'll tell you about it after we'll we'll play this <laughs> get out of this how do we i'm just gonna have to refresh escape, i think i guess yeah i don't know escape there, there we go. go escape the screen uh lots of compliments there uh people loved it the music the sounds the animation that was done by pedro ang for the animation camel did the uh you did all the music and sound effects didn't you I, yeah the storyboards i did the editing for it but uh you know it was it was a good marriage of skills so but i think that wraps up the comic. So if you guys are interested in that, that's, you know, the comic is going to be, it, it, yeah, it's the trailer. So uh, it'll be it'll Shaggy be Bear. It was like, what? And he was loving it. He says, reminds me of a Samurai Jack animation. It's very I'm cool, surprised man. how many people haven't seen the trailer, actually. But people doing their own things, you know, they yeah. miss it. I mean, <laughs> in six months, they'll be like, oh, I never saw that. And they've been, you know, a member in your channel for like a year, you know. <laughs> I know, but you uh, never... yeah, you know, and I, I also try not to play it every Camel Nights because like, you know, for the people who have seen it can get a little tedious to watch it every single time. But uh, yeah, please, please back it, guys. If you like it, it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great, 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 great story. All right. Speaking of um, Star Wars uh, TV shows, did you watch this one? Andor, yeah, no, I'm gonna watch that one next. I'll probably start it tonight actually. After the show, did anyone watch it? That's the question. I have um, a, I have I a think theory that it's not are. as terrible as people want it to be. No, I don't think that's the issue. I don't know. I don't know what this is. This is bounding into comics. Um, this it says the worst Star Wars property to date. We watched one episode, I was just i was just very underwhelmed it seemed like oh, a perfectly yeah. fine thing it's first episode episodes, only too. that's a nope. lot nope uh genuine comics doesn't watch anything star wars anymore yeah i'm like sometimes it's just there's nothing on and yeah rather than that, just kind that's of how sitting i feel there in yeah. silence <laughs> i saw well i saw the trailer for mando 3 i was like oh that looks really good 
And then I remember reading that, like, you kind of need to watch Boba Fett because I had no interest in Boba Fett. So I was like, all right, yeah. I'll just I'll just sit through it. I'll, you know, I'll I'll sit on my phone. And then I found that I was like, put my phone down. I was like, oh, this is actually not too bad. Uh, Snutkin says he dies. What's to watch? Yeah, is this this is the guy that dies at the end of? Oh yeah, Rogue One, isn't it? Uh, what's his name? Clint Dickerson, or I don't know, some made up. What's with these? Oh, something what's with Andor, the prequels about characters you already know their sort of fate on? Uh, Mark Burtonshaw saw it. He says it was great. I've heard good things. I have heard good things, but. I've also heard that no one, even though it's good, no one's watching it, and they're kind of scratching their heads. Hang on, I'm not even sharing it. Well, anymore. they don't have to because the the backlash for Obi Wan, which was truly abysmal. I mean, it was like one of the worst TV shows I've seen in my entire life. Uh, you know, it was enough to make me say like, I don't want to watch this shit anymore. So, this is the thing. They kind of just killed the whole franchise. They, well, they definitely killed it for the diehard fans. Yeah, Obi Wan, because it it contradicts a New Hope. Yeah. It's like, how do you do that? And it's it's a low key remake of a New Hope as well. I mean, it's just it reminds me of that. Remember that 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 uh, video that came out? It's like a documentary on them. <laughs> the future of star wars and they were off on some friggin' retreat and they were all just exactly the type of people that you would hate to be stuck in oh, a room yeah with. it was just a and then they were all like, like talking about diversity and everything and it's like yeah it was a bunch of blubbery women <laughs> it was like oh god i don't need why it reminded me of all wars? the people in that photo that got fired from twitter oh yeah it's well it's the same yeah they're all cut from the same cloth I'm just, I yeah, I'm just not interested. Like I said, Last Jedi broke me, so yeah. I'll. I, if there's literally nothing else on, I may put this on. I may not. I don't know, but I'm not. Either way, even if it's good, I'm not going to care. I don't right. care. Um, a lot of people are just not interested in playing Disney uh, a red cent, and I don't blame them. They killed Marvel too, says Fear Lance, and even Chris Hemsworth commented on his role. That's all I got that I got that pulled up as well. Chris Hemsworth says his return to the MCU depends on Thor being portrayed drastically different from Taiki Watiti's bastardization. Yeah, no shit. Did you watch this one? Love and Thunder. I've s i saw that in the theater. Oh, you were trapped there. I was I I left and my wife was like, "How was it?" I was like, "It exists. <laughs> it's a thing that happened now." <laughs> Even like, my five year old son, who put up a poster of Thor, because he was just like he loved it. He thought Thor was awesome. But he's he, he's been watching clips from the event original Avengers, not the new stuff. Uh huh. Even he was like. He just stopped watching and kind of went off it and does did this something weird else. thing at the end where he ends up with like a daughter. And I didn't know. I, I got I got through fifteen minutes and I just oh, was like, no, well, no, I'm, I'm explaining it. it. It 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 ends up like that, but she's never really a character in the movie at all. And it's so it just ends, and you're like, well, why is why is this here? Like there was no setup for it. It would have been like one thing if he felt like he wanted to have a kid with Jane and they couldn't or something. Then it would be like, all right, that makes there's some type of connective tissue here, but there's nothing. And it's just like, wow, all right. So he has a daughter now. Cool, I guess. I don't know why that fucking matter. And at the end, the name of the movie is Love and Thunder because she's love and he's the thunder and they're going out together to fucking wreak havoc. Fear Lantern says, MCU died with Iron Man. Spider-Man was just a blast in the past. Yeah, that's what probably happened, hey? You know, remember when uh, Hulk did the click thing? Yeah, the snap. That was um, that was the, the Thanos click. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the end of the MCU, and we've been diverted on some strange alternate timeline. I'll say this, What is though. happening now doesn't relate to what happened before. 
I I I think in that it's still the best thing that could have happened. Because could you imagine if like there was an Iron Man four movie and he totally gets cucked, and then like they just reimagine the character as like this feeble minded, you know, he's getting shown up by Riri Williams, and he's just, like that would have been the end. That would have been much much worse than him sacrificing himself. Oh yeah, his as long as he doesn't go back, his legacy is gold. Yeah. Like yeah. rock solid. I mean, they're not they're never gonna top um a character arc like that on such a scale that now like altered the entire course for better or worse of cinema for a very long time. Uh, you know, it's like the perfect storm of the actor, the character, and then yeah, from, you know, from the, the beginning, yeah, to like you know, his plight and his you know, the trials that he had to go through right up to the end to the sacrifice. That was all, and you know, what's interesting too, and I didn't realize this. Um, it was pretty cool that they had Tony be the one who killed him because Thanos first showed up in an Iron Man issue. So it all kind of like low key comes full circle. I That's thought that was cool. Funny. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've read a lot of old Thanos stuff, but I haven't read the original. Original, you know, when they were just sort of figuring out. Uh, yeah, all that. Who stuff. he was? This is a this is a Jean Claude Van Damme comedy commercial. Do you remember that? Yeah, I know. I that scene in particular, I was like, "What is happening?" Well, what I don't get is like, so what's his face? Hemsworth comes out after the fact and says, like, yeah, this was terrible. Just say something on set. You're Thor. You think you have more power than anyone else there. You, you, you're one of the top four guys of the entire Marvel universe. Just be like, I'm not doing this. This is stupid. Yeah, but I wonder how much power he has. He has all the power he wants. I mean, what are they going to say? We're going to kill you off? We're going to kill off this guy who makes us millions and millions and millions of dollars. How funny is this? Phil Anton's right. I have more hope for DC movies and Marvel right now. I mean, we would not I have been saying that. that three yeah. years ago. Wouldn't even been dreaming that. That's weird, huh? Yeah, look, I don't know. I mean, this is just, it was so bizarre. I, I, I literally couldn't get through um 15 minutes i don't know what he's actually said here if they actually list it uh where do you go uh with thor at this point um i think you look at thor dark world uh thor and thor dark world they were quite similar the actor opined ragnarok love and thunder similar i think it's about reinventing him i think i've had such a unique blah 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 I mean, he's not I really. Mean, I, there are places to go. Like, you just just introduce Beta Ray Bill, and the two of them are Thor together or something, and just make the villain like. The problem with the Christian Bale villain was that you never saw him do anything. They kept, and the, it would be great if, like, every other scene he was going to another god and killing him, but we didn't see any of that. It was all just told to us, and it was like, well, who gives a shit? And you don't see him do anything except for the first scene and when he goes and shows up to, to kill, uh, I guess it'd be Thor or Lady Thor, whoever it was. So that's it. It's like, so just make make the villain present and not just there after the fact. And then, you know, there's, I mean, look, there's like 50 more years of lore that they can pull from. I'm sure they can figure something out. Yeah, but you, you heard that that's a red flag, yeah? If you actually you like... Yeah, that they oh, oh, I, to I work there. That on a on a stream yeah. the other day. If you actually are a fan of the comics and the characters, you like the characters, that's a red flag for them. Because that means that you're going to want to represent the character that fans know on the screen and not necessarily what's best for the movie. I like uh Maromi's he says Thor and Beta Ray fight Silver Surfer. Yeah. And then at the end you realize Silver Surfer is coming because Galactus is coming. That's how you introduce that arc. I, just, that, I, don't, I don't think they're doing that anymore. I think they're just, we have these characters and, and it doesn't make any sense because why adapt anything if you're not going to um, do it for the, it's like, it, it's like starting off um, on third base when you adapt something. 
yeah, or second base. You have, you have, I don't know, millions of fans of a character already. So they'll already at least consider checking it out. Whereas if you come up with a new character like whatever, some brand new hero for a movie that's never no one's ever seen before, you've got to convince every single person to go out and watch that. So if you have Thor, then you've already got millions of people who would already consider it. So why just throw away everything they know about the character to make your own movie version of it? It doesn't Is that what they're it. doing though? A lot of the times that's what they are. Like I think with um well with Namor, that's a whole new character that's got nothing to do with Namor. Uh, in the calling him Namor? Yeah. He's not Namor in MCU. He's Namor. And oh. he's, he's has a completely different backstory. He's as a com I think he has a pretty different uh power set. Um yeah, I mean like I'm not a big I don't know too much about Namor, but I watch clownfish videos on it, I watch nerd rotic videos on it, people who, who really do know. And yeah. they're like, it's not, it's not the character. It's not Namor. It's, it's sorry, it's not Namor. It's this new character called Namor. And so why, why even do that? Why not just create a completely different character? I don't know. It I like. Make any how's your father it. said he should be called Nabra? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did see that they had to uh, reduce his junk digitally because it wasn't family friendly. Who Namor's? Yeah, there's like there's those shots of him like is a massive package, and then they like digitally reduce it. Yeah, and it's not just uh, like a, a race swap. They he's supposed to be an Atlantean, but he's now he's an a Mayan or an Aztec or something. Uh, it's all different. Uh -huh. Mister V says it's twenty five percent different. I mean, I don't know. You you guys probably know more than I do. I haven't seen the movie. And I'm I'm not a big Namor fan, so you know I don't know. Yes, people do tend to exaggerate on YouTube, but either way, it's still it's still weird. I think they're doing the same thing with Riri Williams. I think they did the same thing with Miss Marvel. But then again, I guess it doesn't. My point doesn't make as much sense with Riri Williams or Miss Marvel because they didn't have a big fan base anyway. Right. So it's not like there's these millions of riri fans out there who were just chomping at the bit to go see re a riri movie they, they may as well just start from fresh anyway yeah whatever i don't even care anymore <laughs> just like whatever whatever it, it well it's tough because like you know they've been it's just the same universe since 08 it's just like you know there's gonna be peaks and valleys i mean that's that's true of like any franchise like you know when they got uh roger moore and to be bond that was a different bond it was just like well it was a different era so it was goofy and corny and campy and you know it would be it, and then then when they tried to course correct and they brought timothy dalton in, i mean that was the first ever r-rated bond movie they ever made and it was like oh, okay that was too much let's pull it back let's you know try to find an equilibrium what do you think about this like um, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. There's no other person who's Iron Man, at least in today's zeitgeist. Same thing with what's his face for Steve Rogers. Um, Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. And they're super popular. They're iconic kind of portrayals out there. Um, whereas, I don't know, I feel like every time that you just have these characters being able to just be a mantle that gets passed from actor to actor, it kind of, uh, it can, it can water it down or it makes it less relevant or that's like where you start getting fatigue, like Batman fatigue. And, um... Yeah, you know, I guess James Bond as well. We've got to reinvent James Bond. Um as opposed to, well, or you could just have him be this character for a certain set of time and then that's it. And you make all your money 
when he's there and then you move on to something new. I mean, I know it's probably not going to be possible for everything, but. What's the question exactly? <laughs> I don't know. It's just a thought I've had recently about like, do the do the characters that are just they're played by one person and one person only and that's that that's it like they they seem to have more of an impact because they're like oh, that guy there is how I many know. can you how many of those examples can you give me of that being the case then i don't know i haven't thought about it that much i was probably taking a dump while i was thinking about it I can't think of a whole lot of characters that haven't been represented once or twice. I mean, even you think about like, you know, Freddy Krueger, like, well, they even remade that. So like, that would be a good example of like, well, I could, he's a sort of a film institution. That's what it is. But th they did change. That's the, the question there. 40% said, should they retire the characters with the actor? Give them a good send out, a good fi finale, and then be done with it. I think you can, what you should do, like Inspector Crusoe, right? And then they brought, they redid that and they brought it back with uh, Steve Martin. Like there are characters, I think if you have enough time in between, because like, do I care about Pink Panther movies from the seventies? No, I don't. I mean, so like, but if you're trying to rejuvenate something for a new audience, 30, 40, 50 years later, I mean, it's just like, I think it's applicable. But at the same time, you could just say, like, well, why not just make a new character altogether? So maybe it's got to do with how soon it is between the events. Yeah, like, I, I think that's going to be a real issue with James Bond. Because it's like, they killed him off. And, you know, a lot of people like Daniel Craig. And those movies were pretty good, you know, most of them. And then it's just like, all right, but, like, you know, they want to keep that Bond box coming in. But they mm. can't do it too soon because they killed the character off. And then so it's like they are admitting very directly that it's a reboot or a refresh, whatever. Um, but has enough time elapsed where the era of film has shifted that it's it requires, you know, like a complete rebranding. And, you know, the rebranding is done a lot with the with the actor as well. So, uh, yeah, it would be I mean, yeah, you. I think you could do it. I just think it'll take a minute for a while. They were talking about bringing in a. God, what's the guy who plays Loki? What's his name? Um, Tom, uh, Tom Hiddleston or whatever. Middleston. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were talking about him being Bond and they were like essentially agreeing to the idea that Bond is just a blonde guy now. And, you know, all the movies are going to be interchangeable between Tom and Daniel Craig. And then, you know, they ended up dropping that idea. But, uh, but I know if you... I think as late as Pierce Brosnan, they're referring to things that happened in the Sean Connery movies as being canon, which is nuts because it doesn't even make sense. It's just like, you know, it's, but it's like, Oh, remember in this story and that story yeah, Bond like, is a little different though. Cause he, they, to me, they're all standalone instances. They're all kind of like, oh, I agree. Yeah. 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 But it's, you know, every now and like, cause, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, there's one movie that starts with Roger Moore and he visits the grave of his deceased wife. And that happened in, uh, what, a, uh, on her Majesty's secret service with George Lazenby, which was, a, like was actually a sequel and set up to Blofeld who became, you know, uh, a villain in all of the movies, who was actually played by multiple, I was played by um, uh, Donald Pleasance. But, you know, they had, I think Terry Savalas also played. So it's like, you know, like sometimes the actor changes, but the story stays the same. Um, I got a super chat here, but I just want to get to these comments. I didn't think this at all. So Micro says, wasn't the idea that 007 was the person, wasn't one person over the franchise. Each actor was a different 007 that used the code name James Bond. And Jaro says the same thing. I thought Bond was just a code name. I thought Bond was the guy's name and 007 was his 
so, code sign or that, whatever. That, that but whole thing is a fan person. theory. It's never like the Broccoli's have never said that that's the case. And they spit in the face of it when uh, Daniel Craig, like they go to Bond's estate and, you know, yeah. and then you, yeah. So it's, it's, it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a fan theory. That's all it is. Uh, Phil Lennon says, Mike's right. Thank you. Finally. Uh, yeah, 007 is the code name. Bond is his actual name. That's the way I interpreted it. Uh, all right. Super chat here from Travis Parrick for $5. He says, when you flush the toilet, does the water go counterclockwise? Also, do you get attacked by the birds when you go outside? This is a... Um, this is a, uh, a lot of questions here. I've actually got uh, some, I think I've got some responses to this already saved somewhere. Uh, all right, let me let me shoot you this. I'll show you this first. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. how, how, where do, how do I share videos? Present video file. That's it. Okay. Uh, so check this out. This is a, I love this video. See the eyes, uh, and it's quite a fierce magpie um, behind the Mervyn P10 school. From there all it the is. Not very nice. So, strong um, eyes on the back. The of eyes the are going to work. I do have a helmet on, so shouldn't hurt too much. Um, There you go. So yes, the thing about the magpie is though, it's a very smart bird. It's like a crow. So I think one of the smartest birds in the world. So people have these ideas that if you draw eyes on the back of your helmet or like you uh -huh. put the spikes on there, they won't swoop you. If the magpie wants to swoop you, it'll swoop you, but it won't swoop everyone. For some reason, they get a, they want someone. They 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 don't just... like someone. Just turn around and punch it in the face. They have a very big beak. Come on, bro. Come I mean, on, I'm dude. sure you could probably grab it out of the Come air, to... maybe. I don't know. You know, like when Get Joker back. is saying that when Batman's in the plane? Come on. Yeah. Come, Come on. to me, you gruesome son of a bitch. <laughs> he says shotgun deals with them very well. Yeah, put it, well, paint like a gun on the back, you know? I don't, I don't know. I, I I never. I don't think I ever really got swooped, but I know people who have. Maybe I have been swooped. Um. But uh, I don't know. I've got to. I got to answer this friggin' toilet flush question once and for all. Goodness sake! Uh, I. Well, you know, when I you come and like... stay with me, you just be watching that toilet. What? Well, I go the other way. <laughs> I'm like, wow, isn't that great? I'm trying to find here yeah, because we don't have. All right, let's do this. Okay, so the Coriolis effect is real thing. Um, there's actually a place on the equator where they have this thing set up where you can put a, a like a, a flower into a bowl of water, and you set it, and it'll go one way, and then you walk, you know, twenty yards over there cross the equator and it'll go in the opposite direction really the thing is the water has to be very still uh -huh. to start with um and color me triggered has it exactly right so i don't know you guys let me know this is an australian toilet um flushing there's nothing in it thankfully well then i don't want to watch it <laughs> there's nothing in it it's just it's an empty toilet but it, it's a waste of water is what it is you know that you notice like we have that that's where the water is 
on our toilets. You guys have more water, I think. Ours is like very low. On, oh yeah, that's bizarre. Water. Ours goes up, you know, much higher. Yeah, way higher. You guys must get a lot of splashback. It's not um, that bad. I mean, unless you take massive dumps, but like, I don't, I <laughs> which I do. Oh, My okay. dumps are. Uh, I have famously huge turds. Are they uh, like as thick as your arm? <laughs> they're like a, at the end it's like a cobra sitting up out of the t- <laughs> i watched that in a comedy bit once it was hilarious um tefila and says that's a low flow bs toilet this yeah the problem with that toilet. toilet is like you can't poo on the bowl because then you're just gonna get smudge marks see that's why we have plenty of water in ours that's why you have a brush what what am i doing I got. I got to sit there and brush the toilet after I use it. I got shit to do. If you, if you consider it, I'm not doing uh, okay. that. Let me show not you. Let me time. show you how an Australian toilet. We have our own flushing system that was invented Communist by an Australian, <laughs> and I think it's. I think it's mandated. You have to have this flushing system in Australia. Uh, I think uh, because it is. It is. Yeah. It's. It's low water usage. Yeah. Low flow. All right, so he's going to flush it at some point, I think. I mean, I haven't watched this video. I hope he is. All right, here we go. He's got, like, I yeah, got to right, poo it yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, okay. There's a, there's a half flush and a full flush. There's nothing grosser to me, also, than buttons for a toilet. I don't want to touch that. I want to kick it with my heel. What do you mean, kick it with your heel? Do you have a heel thing? Well, you know, like, if it's if it's a, you know... You want a lever. I don't want to push a button. Like, that's all the germs. It's just like germs. Like It is very in. germy. Yeah, it's gross. Uh, Simply Green says, I always hit the full flush because I'm like that. Me too. No half, <laughs> no half measures. Although I do, I don't mind the motto. Um, if it's yellow, keep it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Uh, all right, come on, let's what get. It's blue? Let's see how this thing flush. Okay, all right, we're getting to the flush now. So you'll see it doesn't spiral. This is the point. So there's no Coriolis effect happening in a toilet in Australia. Getting there, getting there. All right, is he going to flush it? Did I go back? There we go. So it just sort of like comes in like that. Ah. Oh. And that's it. That's how an Australian toilet flushes. Yeah, you guys are missing out. Hopefully that will end because I get this question at least I don't know once Five every times a day. <laughs> the freaking Simpsons. I do love that episode. They really did send out some um, some uh, fake news on the toilet situation here. Uh, oh, okay. Says no one wants to see your piss. Well, they, they, I mean they don't have to look if uh, they don't want to see in it. that image. They took the piss out of it. Um, we have handle levers. Yeah, we have them too. I think most of them are buttons, though. Here, uh, in ho- in like hotels or like hospitals, it's just a fucking vacuum. It's, <laughs> there's no effect. There's no airplane. swirl. It's, a... <laughs> it's like, oh, all right, I'm in space. Oh my god! Yeah, not like in The Simpsons, Mahaj, you know. I will be confused. Yeah, no, they they have a similar system in in um, Europe as well, in Germany and France. I, mean, I haven't been to too many. I haven't, I haven't pooped in, and I guess I have. I probably pooped in about ten European countries, but I don't remember all their flushing systems. Mm. Believe it or not, <laughs> wasn't paying attention. Uh, some person says, I heard it's because Aussies' balls stretch far down and they dip in the water of American toilet. I mean, maybe. Oh. That would suck if you were, had your balls dipping into the toilet. I imagine that's got to be an issue for, like, guys in their 80s, you know, just, like, sagging balls. Yeah, because I think they continue to sag. Do you guys have trough walls in public toilets I don't know what that is like a, a, a like a urinal trough uh no uh it's sometimes in bars 
I've been to bars in like Brooklyn or Texas. They'll do that. It's very gimmicky though. It's not very, you don't see it a lot. Fatty says in sports stadiums. Yeah, that's true too. I haven't been to a lot of those either. Yeah, we have them in schools and stuff. Um, (laughs) In schools? No, we don't have them in schools. (laughs) Here, it looks like this. It looks like this. Uh, I didn't think we'd get onto this topic, but. It's okay. Got to talk about something. Yeah. So it looks like that in a school. So everyone kind of like lines up. And the girls freak out because. They're like, I can't believe, and because you can imagine, it's it's like teenage boys or even younger. They're just pissing all over the place. Yeah, and as well, I remember in primary school. Um, oh, and by the way, yeah, this is this is an this is an example of what not to do. I think that's why this photo is taken. Like, you don't do this, obviously. You don't just rub shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it guys try to get a look, um, and. I remember kids would try and see how far back they could stand and sort of arc it in. Ooh. And Classic. so it was like a, you know, the further back you were, the kind of cooler you were. And I remember one kid, he was leaning back like he was doing a limbo and it was arcing up and we were cheering him on. And up here, like at about this height where you see these lights were, it wasn't lights, it was a vent to an out to the outside like and it was it was a mesh vent it was mesh it was mesh wire Uh so you could he actually peed out of the toilet (laughs) into the public area and i mean lucky or unlucky for him he happened to hit the principal (laughs) as he was walking by (laughs) So we're all in there cheering, like, yeah, woo, woo. And in runs the principal with piss on his head, just absolutely livid. So it's like, I mean, he was in trouble, but as uh, as D points out, I mean, he that day he became uh, yeah. a hero to the people. <laughs> to you, the people. Uh, I always have a dream. I mean, that we would I have, have a... been... Go ahead. We would have been 10 years old. Ooh. He's already a legend. <laughs> you gotta, can't, you know, now he has to one up himself every time. Mm. Some person says, I've heard of this English people pissing over tall fences for fun. Yeah. English Australian, we were cut from the same cloth. That's what we do. <laughs> That's what we do. Uh, all right. Speaking, oh no, there's no segue there to uh, boots and heels <laughs> speaking of pissing over a <laughs> thing. Oh, a wall into someone's head uh boots and heels everybody we have patrick in the uh chat here he says will hail salad was good fantastic production every Thanks. every uh camel moon comic comes with the Camel Moon seal of quality, which means uh, you get hollow foil or metallic foil printed on cardstock for the covers and uh, minimum 70 pound glossy. That's the ivory tower standard. You have to have a standard, yo. You, know? you do. You have to have standards. Um, um, and yeah, the uh, the lava foil is really, 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 it's nice. It's very good. Mike, that's the one Mike got. Um so uh it's definitely if you have it if you have that snogan's cover you're gonna know the quality that was really rare though i think we only sold 20 of those so i have one right here actually in fact you could almost make an argument that this one right here will be the rarest cover on the campaign because it's only open for these four days so it's this but hang on a sec let me open it up. It does look very cool. I'll grant you that. All right. Solo layout. So that's the effect. See, there you can see it there in the moon. Yeah. It's so much better in person, but you could flip it over. You might see it on the black too. Let's have a look. You can kind yeah, of make it's it hard. out. 
you can kind of see it in the, the, the chromer areas, but yeah, yep. when in person, it it's it's you know it's much more legit. It's very impressive, and it, you're right. It is very. It's a nice. It's a nice thick stock. I like That's how thick. I like them. <laughs> I like my stock thick. Just not too tall. Yeah, no, you don't want that. That's a waste. Um, Mike, how many copies do you have? Uh, one. I've got the one in my bedroom that I'm still halfway through reading. Two, three, four, four, I think. So I've got oh, five. Okay. I've got five. I think I set you one or two for, you know, gratis, but I could I can't remember. Oh, he's so, so generous. Thank you. I try to be. People are always like, Camel, he's a grifter, you know? He doesn't care about the people. He doesn't he doesn't do anything for anyone. I that's incorrect. All I do is care about the people and how much money they spend. I've totally been neglecting Rumble. I apologize. Uh hello Keen Scene. Hello, Zing Pulse Comics who I've never seen before. So thank you so much for watching over on uh, Rumble. Uh, I see we're, Rumble. I'm getting more subscribers over there. Over 340 now, which is very nice. Uh, I we've got to, I want to, I want to like close out at about two hours, Camel, if you're happy with that. Um, I think we should close out at 20 lava foils sold. So how many are we on? 10. Hmm. Maybe if I refresh and I just really, I really wish really hard, like the secret. I believe. Oh, yeah. Like close your eyes and clinch your fists. You know? Like, <laughs> the secret. Yes. Yeah, if you imagine it, it'll come true. It didn't come true. It didn't You're come true. You're just a bad wisher. That's your problem. Yeah. Uh, but I did want to play the most recent short that you've uploaded. That I've uploaded. Yeah. Well, Sheila. You know, you oh, upload short. Oh, oh, oh. I thought it was like an animation. I was like, what the hell have I done? Yeah, no, that one's great. Let's watch that. Uh, so in case there's anyone here, and I can't imagine why there would be. Oh, before um, we do that, you're talking let me about answer this. Uh, Camel Warlock. taking taxes in a timely manner. What's that? Sorry? Let me just answer this. Warlock says, Camel sent out all the packages still waiting in Canada. Uh, I wrapped them all night tonight. All, they're all wrapped. Uh, the first half were uh, labeled. We'll label the second half tomorrow. And then we'll start sending out international probably next week. So just want, yeah. So it's it's uh, Warlock. I don't know what background number you are, but it is 100% packed. And we'll put a label on it and we'll get it out to you, you know, within a week or so is, is hopefully my plan. So hopefully you'll get some more back as after they've received their. Um, it happens salary. every time. Yeah. Every time we yeah. send out a bunch. Whoever was in that group usually ends up backing because they, you know, and it makes yeah. sense, right? Because you want to make sure that it gets fulfilled and you like the quality of the book and that stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, oh, thanks, oh, thanks, Warlock. Warlock says he backed twice. Oh, Bowler. Uh, so yeah, if you're not for some reason, if you're somehow not aware of the sorts of shenanigans that take place over on camel's channel um this is where you want to be subscribed to camel moon studios i'll post a link here for you we do the video game show and we do camel nights and sheila who is a co-host um cuts up some of the best clips and puts them into shorts for camel and they get Tr like criminally low views for how funny they are yeah this one in particular because she, there was like three months in between because her computer fried maybe it was two months but uh hopefully you know we'll pick back up i think her uh new computer is on its way it'll be there tomorrow the day after but uh yeah this people one I, I thought would be higher but it you know people it underestimate it the power of momentum on i know YouTube. It yeah, really absolutely. makes a massive difference. It's why I've been doing less videos because what happens is when you start, YouTube will like share you around a bit more to encourage you to do it more. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then if you take one day's break, it's like they cut, they oh, cut you it's, off. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, 
It's it's like there's has nothing does nothing matter to you? Does all the work I put in mean nothing? Is like no, it yeah. doesn't. They don't it's care. like no, it doesn't. The last four years, you could have been you could have been doing it, you know, three times a day for four years in a row. If you take a day off, they're like, Oh, he's not making videos anymore. Oh, like, I guess like, he doesn't want to work here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what no no no, I didn't say that. <laughs> so it's pretty nuts, but uh we pushed through. Anyway, let's play this. This is freaking great. Uh sharing audio. Yep. Ah, oh, sound. Is that, Jap is that a Japanese black guy? That's, 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 that's not a black guy. Yo, oh shit. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh no, leave it out. Look at loses his mind. I love his reaction. <laughs> this is this is fucking wild. First Jima for two dollars. Says, stop mocking Rui Armstrong. <laughs> 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 fucking take a bow, mate. Take a fucking bow. Best super chat ever. I think. Yeah, well, best super chat Jima. ever. Urashima, who had that comment about how it was a goth rooster in the morning. Was, oh, uh, yes. That was so good, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they don't have... Like, I see, I, you know, I, I I scroll through uh, YouTube like everyone else and occasionally, you know, when I'm bored and see some, some shorts. None of them are that funny. None of them. I know. I, know. I, I mean, they're okay, but I, I think they're great advertisements for the show. And although the views aren't there just yet, maybe they'll get there. We we definitely get subs from them. So I would I would 100% accredit the last 70 something subs to Sheila putting those up. Um, yeah, I, I've, I haven't been really doing many videos the last week or so, and it's like they just turn off the spigot. Doesn't matter how popular yeah. the streams are, nothing. They just like off, no new subs. You, you know have who's to killing it videos. though. Um. Adam Post. Yeah, I know. I've been I've been shouting out him uh, all over YouTube. He, that's his he, he's, he's an example of exactly what I'm talking about um with the momentum thing. Let me pull him up actually. Yeah, he's been just crushing it. And it's like you you get to see how the algorithm really does work for you when you when you optimize for it he's doing two to three episodes a day though I three, mean, like, three he must sometimes leave four. It on his computer sometimes four so yeah and that's the thing it's like so occasionally he'll get a video i mean it's not often these days but occasionally he'll get a video that it just won't do as well like this one here under a thousand yeah yeah and it's not like it's different it's not like it's a different subject but his so his low end is between well, two to three thousand. But his high end, he's had videos on there between ten to fifteen to twenty k. Yeah. So like this one's got five hundred. It's it's not any different, right? Yeah. The, the The difference is that yeah these these ones that he's doing just they get picked up by the algorithm. He's doing three to four videos a day every day, consistent videos, consistent topic. Um, just like the latest news or whatever. He's absolutely crushing it. Yeah, some of them, like this one's 12, but I think if you go to his, where does he go? Popular. Yeah, he's got 50, 37, 19. 37K, uh, holy cow, 19K, 50K, 18K. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's nuts. I've had a couple up here, but it's like once in a blue moon, he's got a whole bunch. So I yeah. he must be making a, a pretty penny on the... Uh, ad revenue i wonder if he's gonna make a comeback into comics yeah maybe he's ramping up i mean it's interesting like it's youtube i mean i could go on and on and on for hours about youtube he's doing what the quartering does exactly yeah it's a this is a thing like you can do this as long as you know how to do it and he does it really well and you know you can figure out the thumbnails and everything as long as you can keep up with the with the um, timetable, with the schedule, you can do it and find success. I've watched a bunch of guys 
you know, go from under 1,000 subs to over 10,000 doing something similar to this. But yeah, like I said, the minute you drop off, they're like, oh. Oh, you don't work here anymore. I didn't know you quit. It was like, well, I didn't quit. <laughs> That's not what happened. Yeah, I was just taking a holiday. I'm not allowed to take a holiday. <laughs> we cleaned your desk out for you. <laughs> and we took I the parking spot. Bye bye. I didn't oh, get okay. this. I didn't get this comment at first, Johnny. The algorithm loves the wide margins. Yeah, he's the original wide margins man. Um, Henry Beamer said he started getting post recommendations, and I realized I'd been subscribed to him for three years. Yeah, well, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't used to make. I mean, this is a new thing. He's been doing it for about three months. But yeah, it just goes to show, like, we can do this. But I mean, I did it for a month as an experiment, one video a day. And I think I ended up I mean, getting like, yeah, all my videos were getting over a thousand. It worked One of them for you. got 37. A bunch got over five. Um, uh, but it's like, the, the issue is, is like, you know, when I'm done with this campaign, am I going to have time to do stuff technically? But it's for me, it's going to be drawing the book. You yeah. know, it's like, I'm not going to, I just, you know. But it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like it, it makes me think, you know, there's people who could be doing this and then using this power to help promote CG, um, you know, get more and more people doing that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I think uh, we are going to leave it there because we're over two hours. Uh, boots and heels. I don't know if we got another backer. I don't think so. It's fine. Well, maybe they'll come in tomorrow. But uh, yeah. Yeah, there'll be they'll, the people who promise us they'll be watching the uh, replays. Uh, stay tuned for this. I will continue working on it. I'll be making a video on my progress with uh, me trying to set up this thing as a campaign. Fingers crossed it actually works. I'm sure it will. It might be very, very simple, though. I don't know. I We'll see how it goes. But uh, I got good response from the cover. So, you know, hopefully we'll get some people who want to grab it. Um other than that, sub to Camel. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. Do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, Mortal V, I forgot. He has his his avatar is the El Pimpo Maxima. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> A young camel. Look at him. Look at those pimp glasses. I'm a Pimpo Maximo. <laughs> that's what you, I do. Uh, you can still do it. You need to do the oh, El yeah. Pimpo voice. Maybe, More. maybe like uh, I'll do El Pimpo, you know, an entire episode of Camel Nights if we hit like should, 30K or something. I don't know, an entire episode. You know what you should do? You should cut a new El Pimpo like 15 years later. Clip. <laughs> El Pimpo is like living in Florida with a golf cart. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> Here, maybe, you know, you work at, you work at um, Best Buy or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, El Pimpo's really hitting hard time. <laughs> you like this 77 inch. <laughs> maximum screen i got a conscience you can't have a conscience in the pink game <laughs> or in the best buy game yeah. i'm a grifter right. with a conscience uh, you know how hard that is <laughs> uh thank you camel for hanging out um but the biggest thank you of all goes out to the wonderful amazing spectacular and ever phenomenal sexiest chat and all of cg we will probably do a draw stream tomorrow night if um people want it so uh we'll do we just moved it forward so uh come oh, back and it's hang tomorrow out night oh i thought it was tuesday night okay so tomorrow oh. night's fine whenever when it, yeah it could be tuesday well, that's fine either well, whenever you guys want to do it <laughs> it's tomorrow or um, the day after, but okay whatever whatever all right i'll see you guys later have a good night bye 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 individually we are weak like a single twig but as a bundle we form a mighty factor